Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today I'm going to be trying to run the game below the system requirements, specifically the minimum system requirements, because I kind of like doing that. It's fun to see how scalable these games are. BeamNG, as we found out last time I did this, is quite scalable. The game looks terrible, as you can see, but it is fun to run the game on something that is basically a display adapter. And that card is called the NVIDIA GT610. It's back again. So let's start off by checking out what the minimum requirements for automation are, and there are a few things to consider with this as well, because BeamNG is a game where you're constantly in motion. Now, obviously it's a driving game, it's a physics simulator, so stuff is happening, things are moving, uh, you're, you're driving so you're moving, <laughs> and having a high frame rate is beneficial in that area, but automation is a glorified spreadsheet simulator, and you don't need 60 FPS in Excel to be enjoying it. Uh, although honestly Excel is not enjoyable to begin with, but <laughs> automation for whatever reason is. It's, it's Excel, but it has context. I guess that's the fun. Basically, the requirements for automation are not as high because, well, you don't have to run the game smoothly in order for it to be playable. Now, I would generally consider 30 FPS to be the benchmark of what is playable and what isn't, but in automation we can let it slide a little bit as you'll see. Uh, so the minimum requirements for this, they got Windows and all that, dual core, we have 12, so we're good. Uh, 4 gigs of RAM. Graphics is where things get interesting. So Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics, I don't really care, we're not going to measure that at all. But the interesting stuff is the GeForce 400 series, and they just list the entire 400 series, so that's what we have to compare it to. And the Radeon HD 2000 series, which is again, another series. The problem is the Iridian HD 2000 series uh, came out in 2007, so <laughs> it's been a while since those ones were on the market. Uh, and the G4 series, a little bit newer, but still fairly old tech. Now the funny part of this is that uh, it is asking for DirectX 11, and we gotta keep that in mind moving forward. So as a baseline, this is the NVIDIA GeForce GT610. Mine is a Zotac version, it is 2 gigabytes of... Um, memory, although that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter how much memory you have if the actual processor is not very quick, and in this case, that is the case. <laughs> so we're not limited by memory, we're limited by power. As I said at the beginning of this video, it is more of a display adapter, it's not something that really is meant to play games, but you can play games on it, and so that's why we're using it in such a way. So our first comparison is going to be with the 400 series. Now I know that I was just talking about how Excel is boring and you are currently looking at a chart that was made in Excel. I like Excel to be honest with you, but <laughs> I like making charts. This is one such chart. Uh, it's comparing the 400 series to the GT610. And if you're not here for a graphics card history lesson, then too bad, uh, you're gonna get some learning done today because uh, we need to compare these cards to the GT610 so we know what we're working with. Now basically what I've done is I've got all of the relevant data from each of these cards and how they compare to the 610 uh, from Tech Power Up. And what this measures is essentially their specs. It does not measure their actual gaming performance. It does not mean that the GT610 is actually twice as good as one card or half as good as another card in terms of frame rate. It's basically just the specifications. So real-time gaming performance might differ. And obviously it depends on the game too, not, not all games are created equal. But that being said, this chart measures the 400 series cards versus the 610. Now the big line in the middle there is 100%. So if it was 100, 100, that means that they're equal. So for the example, uh, the 405 OEM A version, which is some really weak OEM card that might have been made by HP or Dell or something, is 220%. Uh, which is confusing because you would think that that means it's two and a half times better than the GT610 or something like that, but what it actually means is the GT610 is 220% more powerful than it. <laughs> so that's the way that this comparison works. Jumping down to a mid-range GT card, the 440, uh, the GT610 has about half of the power of a GT440. So I don't think when the automation devs were talking about the 400 series that they were talking about the 405, uh, but it, it basically anything GT, it's probably better than the GT610 according to my graph here. The absolute top of the range, the GTX 490, 
when compared to the GT610, uh, the GT610 is 15% the power of a 490, <laughs> which is pretty darn funny. So this to me makes sense. This, this kind of chart makes a little bit of sense. It's funny that a series two generations before the 610, almost every card in it is better than it, but that's just how it works sometimes, at least in specs. That's how it goes. Now, compatibility is a different story because the GT610 natively supports DirectX 11, and that is very important for our uh, thing today. But let's get on to some cards that do not support DirectX 11. Uh, it is the HD 2000 series. Now, I must reiterate here that these cards came out in 2007. 2007! <laughs> that was a long time ago. The GT610 came out in 2012, so I guess five years difference isn't... Well, actually, five years difference is bloody massive when it comes to graphics cards, but uh, in this case, it's a similar way that the graph works. 100% is down there, uh, and the GT610 is four, basically almost five times better than the worst uh, HD2000 series card, which, as we will find out today, there is zero chance that that thing could play automation. No way. <laughs> It's basically on the same level as the HD 2600 Pro. They're basically neck and neck in terms of performance, at least in the case of the specs. And then when you jump up to the best card in the range, uh, the 2900 XT, this might be some nostalgia for those of you who are in this generation, uh, it's actually about 57% of the power of one of those, a graphics card from 2007. <laughs> Man, times have changed. The thing looks baller though. I wish that we had flames on the sides of graphics cards these days. Like, man oh man. It's only got 512 megs of memory, but it's still twice as good as a GT610. Nuts. But yeah, like I said, these things only support DirectX 10. So funnily enough, the minimum requirements for automation don't actually make any sense because the Radeon HD 2000 series, which is ATI by the way, they don't even exist, it, it doesn't support DirectX 11, so it's not gonna work. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the actual gaming. So once again, I put the GC610 in place of my RTX 2080 Ti. My full computer specs are linked in the description and also I've written them out in the description for you so you can see what I have. But to run it down very quickly, uh, basically just an Ryzen 3900X, usually a 2080 Ti, but in this case the GT610, we got 32 gigs of RAM, 1000 watt power supply. Basically, it's going to be a massive graphics card bottleneck, which is exactly the way I like to see it. Now, I struggled a little bit here because I forgot to turn on the power switch and I'm a bit of an idiot. You know, I've been building computers for years and I still tend to make some small mistakes every once in a while, but I did end up getting the thing fired up and there she goes whirring away. Uh, all nice with a tiny fan on there. So immediately when I booted up the game after installing the graphics drivers, the most recent ones that the GT610 can get, uh, I got a warning. And if you're reading that warning, it says graphics driver for NVIDIA GeForce uh, is from 2017. <laughs> but that's all that I can get for this card. That is the newest one that I can install on my PC, which is hilarious and also unfortunate. It's funny that automation actually has a warning for this though. I have never seen this before, but it's very funny. I like this a lot. <laughs> so thank you devs for uh, pointing out how out of date my graphics card is. So booting into the game, I did not change the graphics settings from how I usually play it when I'm running it on a 2080 Ti, which as you can likely guess, the difference in performance is staggering and the frame rate uh, was taking a bit of a dive. This is at 1440p, uh, 4 FPS, <laughs> not ideal for uh, the gameplay, uh, yeah, this is definitely unplayable. So very quickly I went into the settings and decided to change some stuff up. First thing that I did was drop the game down to ultra low because that's uh, pretty necessary and that includes 50% resolution scaling uh, which makes a huge difference. So basically what that does is it means that uh, whatever resolution the game is rendering itself in it's going to half that and then upscale. So at 1440p that means the game is actually only rendering at 720p. Uh, and then it's upscaling it to 1440 for the purposes of the 
monitor, I guess, uh, but it's a cool way to do things, and res resolution scale is something that's very helpful for ancient graphics cards, but my goodness does it look horrible, as you can see. So at 1080p, I decided to go with 100% resolution scaling, which means it would actually have to render it at 1080, and I wanted to see what kind of frame rate that would give us. Generally speaking, when it comes to graphics cards, the higher your resolution, the more of a load goes onto the graphics card itself. So in order to make this work properly, we kind of need to just shift a bit of the power to the CPU, which is the exact opposite of what I'm doing here. And that's why it's running at 7 FPS. <laughs> Not exactly ideal. Just spinning the car around native 1080p, it looks fine, but it's like... Man, 5 FPS, I don't think I can live with this. So I gotta quickly explain why I'm recording this with my phone, and the reason is quite simply because I don't want to affect the performance of the graphics card right out of the gate. A little bit later on we do jump into some actual recorded footage, uh, because thankfully that is still possible. Although I can't use hardware encoding, it says that it's not possible, which is fine, so it's recorded using software. Check out those GPU temps by the way, 65 degrees. It's actually not that hot, all things considered. And funnily enough, my RTX 2080 Ti, when I have the glass closed on my case, runs way hotter. Uh, so that's why I open it up when I'm playing games. <laughs> so automation has a frame rate limiter. I didn't use it for this purpose, but I again went into the menus and lowered things down even further, uh, trying to tick off basically every box we could. So low quality thumbnails, no more uh, UI transparency and when I eventually got to that setting. And you'll notice as well that automation has ray tracing. Yes, we do test that out later on, and my goodness, is it funny. So automation doesn't have that many resolution options, the lowest being uh, 1024 by 780, but that is also a 4 by 3 resolution. So then it gets stretched to the screen and it looks hideous, and uh, it didn't really help that much. <laughs> as much as that sucks to see, it just did not do very well. Spinning the car around, I mean our frame rate is double from what it used to be. The reason I'm using this Land Rover is because it has a decent amount of fixtures on it, but I, I mean still, <laughs> I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference. One thing that is significant is in the photo scene, the frame rate does change a lot, and it depends on which photo scene you're using as well. Some of them are worse than others. Uh, the white one is usually pretty good, but as soon as you go to any one that has detail or lighting, the frame rate takes a deep dive, even on my regular system. So I decided to switch to 720p because I wanted to render it in 16x9. I know that that uh, is probably not as good for the frame rate, but it did make a difference. And uh, keep in mind, this is half of 720p as well, so PlayStation 2 levels of uh, resolution here, but that's the way it's got to be. That's the only way to get 20 FPS in the game, as you can see, but it looks horrendous. I know you can't see too many details with the phone, but just wait till we get to the recording. My goodness. So one of the worst photo scenes for frame rate, I jumped into it real quick, and uh, it's got drastic tears everywhere, which is hilarious. Uh, and it also runs at about 11 FPS, which is unfortunate. <laughs> it's kind of funny to see because, well, it runs at 30 on my 2080 Ti, <laughs> so it's not that much different. Right, so here is the recorded in-game footage from uh, this session, and there's the settings once again for you. Everything absolutely down to the lowest, and uh, yeah, there isn't much more that I can do. I was hoping to make things even lower, but that is that. <laughs> so jumping back into the car, and you can see a few more details now, mostly because you're not looking through a phone, but we're getting a record 16 FPS. Uh, <laughs> it seems like maybe this was a poor choice. I'm not sure how much effect the actual recording had on the frame rate, because sometimes it would jump to 20, sometimes it would jump back down to 10. It was just all over the place. GPU usage constantly at 100%. CPU basically was just used for the encoding of the video, so 13% max there. It, it's the same story as we've had before, but at least this time, like, the game is at least playable. I kind of wonder if you could maybe play automation at 10 FPS. It would suck, but it's definitely doable if you have to. You kind of need to make some sacrifices to be able to see what's going on in the game, and I feel like that happened in my case here where I put the game up to 720p, 
because I couldn't stand the 4x3 resolution, <laughs> but I did lose frames for that. Something I'd really like to do is get one of those 400 series cards, and not necessarily the older ATI ones, but the 400 series seems like it might actually be able to play this game, probably because it supports DirectX 11, even if it is the ancient version. Uh, and I'm curious to see if it would do any better than the 610. Like, the drivers would be older, but yeah, it's um, more powerful, I guess. Less VRAM, but that's... <laughs> as I said, it doesn't really matter. By the way, the Bugo is looking pretty darn slick in uh, automation at this, fr <laughs> at this frame rate and at this resolution. This is Bugo home territory here, so it makes a lot of sense. So I got a little bit gutsy and I decided that I wanted to try out ray tracing. Uh, and this is at the same settings that we were using before, it's literally just uh, just ray tracing enabled. And I even was able to put it up to high. Honestly, it didn't have that much of a performance impact, uh, which is crazy to think about. That you can run ray tracing on a GT610. Uh, obviously, it's not the full RTX experience, but it's reasonably well optimized, I guess, and to be able to run this way. So this is high ray tracing at 16 FPS, and the game does look better. Actually, 22 FPS there, woo. But yeah, it legit looks better than it did before. Uh, so ray tracing might actually be the savior. Although, to be honest, I would try and fix the resolution scaling first, because <laughs> that's what's really making it look grainy. And last but not least, I decided to attempt to overclock the GT610 because I'm nuts. Uh, so using MSI Afterburner, unfortunately, it doesn't have the ability to auto-overclock this GPU. I was able to do that on my 2080 Ti, which is very handy, because it kind of skips the process of what I had to do here to get it stable, but I basically just went up a little bit, not very much. Stock speed on the core was 810, stock speed on the memory is 533, and I increased those to 903 on the core and 602 on the memory clock, so nothing huge, but just a little bit extra because I wanted to see if it would improve the frame rate at all, and uh, spoilers, it didn't. Uh, so I ran the game once again with the overclock, and we were still getting 20-ish FPS, maybe a little bit more consistently, but it wasn't much better. Same thing in the photo scene, just not much better at all. And uh, I think I saw 30 FPS once by accident when I went into a wall, but that was the only time we ever saw a 3. It was always either a 1 or a 2. And uh, yeah, those are unpleasant frame rates to say the least. So out of curiosity, once again, I decided to just crank back up the settings one by one and see what changed. So native 720p on this, uh, instead of downscaling at 50%, means that you get 10 FPS. And I honestly think that's probably the best compromise that you can make to make the game more playable. Um, because now you can actually see what you're doing, <laughs> which is pretty important for these kind of things. So yeah, if you're playing on a super low end card, something worse or equivalent to the GT610, I would suggest going the lowest possible with 100% scaling and probably cap the game to 20 uh, because otherwise your card is going to be working overtime all the time, which is not good for it. But at this point, uh, are you really that worried about it? So in conclusion, is automation playable at below minimum settings? The answer is yes, but not really. Uh, it depends on what graphics card you have, and in this case, this is a very low power DirectX 11 card. Uh, so yeah, it was able to play the game, but not well at all. It's really, really fun to do these kind of things. I am very excited to try out more games and more graphics cards. So yeah, let me know what you play automation with. Tell me your graphics settings in the comments, what kind of frame rates you get, what GPU you have. I'm very interested in this stuff, honestly. I uh, found it very cool to see what kind of PCs people were running last time with the BeamNG stuff. Uh, it's crazy that people are running some ancient tech and still having fun with the game, but to me that's just really cool. So let me know what you play automation with. And with that, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like it and subscribe for more content like this. I've been making more of these video essay style videos uh, every once in a while here, and they've been really enjoyable, and uh, I really uh, want to keep it up. So <laughs> thanks for your support. Keep watching these videos. Stick around. Check out that BeamNG one, and I'll see you again next time.